Hi, Edward. Hi, Alexa. What are you up to? I am currently standing waiting for uh, the wonderful Sophie Sellew to come and pick me up. She is an incredible artist and we're going to go foraging in her favourite place with some wood to make some art. How's the weather there? It's actually very nice, surprisingly. Good luck. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Cooey. -bye. Bye. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Good. Here we go. Where are you taking me? A little private family woodlands in Kent and there's some storm damaged trees there so we're going to collect up some wood. And, nice. Uh, yeah, take it back to the studio. Do you come here often? <laughs> I do, yeah. It's just a really beautiful secluded little spot. It's got loads of trees that need our help so we're going to go collect some timber. So how do you go about sourcing the wood that you use? We take a walk in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> we have a look for trees that have come down in storms. So we make sure we're only using storm fallen timber so we don't cut a tree down just to make something with it. Amazing. So why is it important for you to source storm fallen wood in terms of the environment? Trees fall down all the time. In a sort of small private woodland like this, it's really important to keep on top of that. So whenever a tree does come down, we'll process it and manage it. And if it's too far rotten, we'll leave it in the woodlands and then yeah. it goes back into the ground, which is also important. I mean, the oldest tree that we've had come down was about 180 years because we counted the rings and yeah. that's obviously really sad but it's so special that we get to make pieces that will be loved and live in people's homes for a really long time. Because I'm a tree dummy what kind of uh, wood is this? So we've got a few in this woodlands we've got a lot of ash trees there's hornbeam trees sycamores cherries silver birch got a few oaks there's quite a lot here. Nice yeah what, good what's the easiest one to manipulate? For me sycamore is one of the easiest ones to use it's like a really creamy milky white and oh, it's just nice a dream to carve. Oh, maybe I get to have a go on that one. You, yeah. <laughs> I like the idea that when everyone else is freaking out that there's a storm, you're like, it's <laughs> okay. perfect. So this is a tree that actually came down recently. Oh, wow. So we've started to process all the logs and then we'll move them on later. Okay, so this is your beautiful workshop. What's your creative process once you've got the wood? I do lots of really quick sketches onto paper. I don't want to make any mistakes or waste anything, so yes. it's got to be right. Absolutely. And, and what kind of objects are you making at the moment? My favourite thing to make is the brushes. Yeah. I've always set out to make things that are completely different. They're also just objects that you don't need to hide away. So once you've finished cleaning your table, got all the crumbs off, then you can put your brush as like pride of place. And it's like an art piece as well as a fashion. Absolutely. Object. To the point where I didn't realize that I could use it as an actual brush. Yeah. Okay, so what's going on here? So we've got some sycamore. Take out the bowl of the spoon first. So we're going to use a chisel. You just want to keep the chisel nice and flat. Oh my God, this is so fun. <laughs> it's satisfying, right? Was this one of the first things you ever made? I went on a spoon carving workshop probably about 11 or 12 years ago now and just loved the process. Oh my God, I love that so Fun, much. Right? Now that you've carved out the bowl of the spoon, yeah. we'll start working on shaping the back and the handle of it. I'll give you a little demo. Yeah. So I've got some carving knives here. Take off really small little bits. Love. There you go. Thank you. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a natural at this point. <laughs> You're getting there. <laughs> Therapeutic though. It's Quite so cool. nice. Probably a few more sort of finishing cuts to shape up the rest of it, but I just love how it's got texture all it's over it. It's gorgeous, yeah. Why is sustainability so important to you? Quite unconsciously, I've always worked with either found materials, reclaimed timber or storm fallen trees just because it makes sense. It doesn't, I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> you sort of consider the best possible way to make something. And I think if you want something to live in your home for a really long time, it's so good to know that it's come from a good place. There we go. There she blows. If you keep the knife like what I normally do is there. You know. Sophie, I'm not a natural. <laughs> You'll get there. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't a natural either when I started this. I actually have my very first oh, spoon. Oh, please show me. So feel better about it's, this. It's so sad and sweet, oh. but it's one of those things that I just can't get rid of because it's sort of part of the journey. That's you know? really cute. <laughs> it's like a little skeleton doll. It's very sweet. Sophie, you've been very generous and helped me carve and whittle my spoon and it's really beautiful but i think we can see who the real pro is so this has been so fun and lovely to learn about what you do are you going to give me a lift home i can definitely stretch with a lift home <laughs> okay thank you very much <laughs>